And I want you to go with me, if you want to, to the book of Psalms. The book of Psalms, chapter 29, verse 11. Psalms 29, 11. If you came Sunday morning, I begin to talk to you about how that God is a giving God, but giving you strength. That God will give you power and God will give you strength. He just wants to give it to you. He wants to give you power. He wants to give you might. He wants to give you ability. He wants to give you the strength to make it. The strength to get out of it. The strength to get through it in the name of Jesus. God is a mighty God. David said, I've heard this once and twice that power belongs to God. All power, all authority, all dominion, all might belongs to God. If you need strength, the place to run is God. If you need ability and might, God is an ever-present help and your strength in time of trouble. Somebody say amen. Psalms 29, 11 says, The Lord will give strength unto his people. The Lord will bless his people with peace. Notice it says the Lord will just give that strength. You don't have to earn it. God wants to give you the strength to make it. The strength to be a dad. The strength to be a husband or a wife. The strength to be a child. The strength to whatever you need at work. Whatever you need in life. God wants to give you the strength to endure that test. Endure that battle. Endure whatever that it is. God will give you the power and the might and the strength for things to get better in the name of Jesus. The strength and the power of God will make your marriage better. Better. The strength and the power of God will make your health better. The strength and the power of God will make your mental capacity even better. There's, there's just nothing too hard for the Lord. Can I get a witness in this place? Years ago when my son was, uh, he was hit on the football field and, and it blew his knee out and there were thousands of people in the stands. I got out of the stands and walked down at about the 40 yard line and I laid my hand on Jonathan and they brought the ambulance in and they said, we're gonna have to take him away in the ambulance. And the EMTs, the paramedics were there, looked at him, worked on him a minute and said, he will never play football again. He's gotta have surgery in the morning. Right there in front of everybody, I made the official step out of the way. I laid my hand on Jonathan's knee and I asked for the power of Almighty God to move into that knee and into those ligaments and heal what was ever wrong in the name of Jesus. They put him on the ambulance. By the time he got to the hospital, ladies and gentlemen, they did the x-rays. The doctor said, I don't know what to tell you, but there's nothing wrong with this boy's knee. I believe the power and the strength of Almighty God got down in there in the name of Jesus. I pray that over him all the time. Not long ago, he was on uh, Interstate 35. He's a state trooper. A man came driving by and shot a 45 caliber gun at him. The bullet completely missed his body but went through his britches, left a hole in his pants, ricocheted off the door and then left a hole in this crease of the pants but never touched his physical body. I believe the Lord is still the strength of his life in the name of Jesus. The Lord is the strength of your body. The Lord is that strength for your mind. The Lord is the strength for that occasional temptation that the devil wants to corner you with. The Lord is the strength for that thing that seems to come back ever so often at work or at home. It's just like a cycle that comes along ever so often. You can have the strength and the power of God and you can get past it. You can get away from it. You can get through it. If God be for me, who can be against Against me. Come on, hallelujah. His strength is made perfect in my weakness. Did you hear me? He wants me to come to him and say, Lord, I know that I'm weak in these areas, but I'm looking to you for your strength. You don't have to get stronger to get his strength. You just have to believe in his strength and that he wants to give you his strength. It's time for you to get over what you've been through. How do you do it? With the strength of God. It's time for you to get past your past. How do you do it? With the strength and the power of Almighty God. It's time for you to move forward and have the best God has for you. How are you going to get your hands on it? With the strength of God. How are you going to walk out and claim it? With the strength of God. How are you going to get a hold of it and bring it into your life? With the might and the power and the ability of a mighty God. The mighty God. The mighty God of Israel, the mighty God of the church. Give him a praise in the house of the Lord. The strength of God. 
the strength and the power of God. I remember when my Papa Evans died and they asked me to do the funeral. I loved that old man. And I thought, my God, how am I going to do his funeral? And the night before the funeral, I sat in a chair for two hours and I said, Lord, I thank you for your strength to be able to do this. When my mom came to me when my dad died and said, I want you to do the funeral. And I went home that evening, the next day where we're going to do the funeral. And I got home that night and I said, Lord, I thank you that you're going to give me the strength to do it in the name of Jesus. The strength not to mourn, the strength not to grieve, but the strength to minister about the Lord and the strength to tell about his life in the name of Jesus. Everywhere I still go today, three years later, people walk up to me and say to me, that was the most powerful thing I have ever heard at a funeral in my life. Why? Because I didn't go at it weak. I went at it with the strength of Almighty God. It doesn't matter what the enemy's doing. It matters what the Lord has already done. Anybody going to help me? Anybody going to praise God with me? It matters. Look at what the Lord has done. Give him a crazy praise. What are you facing right now? The Lord will give strength unto his people. Luke 10, 19. Behold. What a way to start a scripture. Behold. Take a look. When it says behold, it means it wants you to look at this. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all, over all the power of the enemy, over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. You need to say that over yourself all the time. God has given me the power over this. You don't need to cry about it. You don't need to grieve about it. You don't need to be afraid of it. God has given you the power to tread on it, to just walk over it in the name of Jesus. I'm going to just keep walking. I'm just going to keep moving because I have the power to tread over serpents and scorpions. Are you going to listen to me now? Over all the power of the enemy. The enemy wants you afraid. He wants you weak. He wants you feeling like that you're being defeated. But God's given you power over all the power of the enemy. The devil has no authority or power over you. Ladies and gentlemen, you, God has given you all of his strength, all of his power, all of his might, all of his mercy, all of his grace. Oh, somebody tell me if I'm in the right church. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can face that person at work that's giving you hell on earth. You can face that financial dilemma with the strength of Almighty God. You can raise that child that seems to be going through so much with the strength and the ability of Almighty God. You can face that situation with the power of Almighty God. You can face that court case with the strength and the ability of Almighty God. You can face that what the doctor says about you with the power of Almighty God. The Bible says in Luke 18, 1, we ought to pray and not to faint. What do we pray so that we will not faint? Lord, I thank you for your strength. I thank you that you're going to help me to preach. I think you're going to help me to teach. Come on. For the last 20 years, I've had people come in and out of this church sometimes like it's a revolving door, but he's given me the strength to stay here, the strength to preach the gospel, to preach it with more word than I've ever preached it before, to preach it with more results than I've ever preached it before. I've seen a lot of things in these 20 to 40 years, but the Lord has given me the strength to do it. He'll give you the strength to do it in the name of Jesus. Somebody give him a crazy praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's the strength and the ability of Almighty God. I give you power. 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 7. God has not given me a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. God's not giving me. Fear don't come from God. Worry doesn't come from God. Hallelujah. My wife will tell you there's some times that I'm driving home and the enemy will say into my mind, that's the worst sermon I've ever heard in the history of mankind. He said, the way you preach tonight and nobody ever going to come back. What I've got to do is said, no, I preach in the strength and the ability of Almighty God. You see me up here, but you think that I never face an attack. I face attack every day of my life, but I claim the strength and the ability of Almighty God. The enemy doesn't want you in victory. He doesn't want me in victory. He doesn't want you living blessed. He doesn't want me living blessed. He doesn't want one Christian to live blessed, but you got to depend on the power of Almighty God. Not a spirit of worry, not a spirit of timidity, not a spirit of fear, not a spirit of condemnation, but power and love and a sound mind. Y'all going to have some church with me tonight? 
Hallelujah. 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 I understand. Glory. Treading serpents and scorpions in the name of Jesus. Amen. Philippians 4.13. Philippians 14. Hallelujah. Listen to this scripture. I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. All things. Somebody shout all things. No matter what it is. What, what is that thing that you're facing? What is that thing that's happening? You can do all things through Christ that strengthens you. How many things? All things. Have you got things mounting up on you? Is the list getting bigger and bigger? You can do all things through Christ that strengthens you. Your list may be twice as big this year as it was last year, but you can do all things through Christ that strengthens you. You've got to talk to God about it. You've got to talk to God all the time about his power and his ability. I talk to God at 60 years old about my physical body. I plan on preaching until I'm 75, 80 years old. I talk to God about my ability to do it at 80 years old. I talk to God about being able to stand and minister the word of God no matter how old I get. I talk to God about my strength, my ability, my mind my capability he's going to give my mind the strength to think my body the strength to do in the name of Jesus I'm looking forward to the day that lined up all the way up and down the street to get in here we have to lay hands on hundreds of people to three or four o'clock in the afternoon but we can be strong enough to do it in the name Strong in the Lord and the power of his might. I can do this. Say it with me. I can do this. It's through Christ that strengthens me. Hallelujah. I want, I want you to know the devil wants you to talk about being defeated. He wants you to talk about giving in and giving up. But you can do all things through Christ that strengthens you. He's looking for a way to make you feel weak, either through your child or through your work or through your home or through your money and through your body, through some kind of something that's going on. He wants you to feel weak. He wants you to think that you can't, but you can do all things through Christ that strengthens you. Lord, I thank you for your power. I thank you for your might. I thank you that you want to give it to me in the name of Jesus. I have spent a lot of nights all night on Saturday night. I don't understand it. I've stayed all night on Saturday night to in a hospital and step in the church on Sunday morning to preach the gospel and you couldn't even tell it on my body that I'd been there but that's the power and the strength of almighty God in the name of Jesus. He'll give power to the faint. To them that has no might, he will increase their Somebody say amen. amen. Give God a crazy praise. He'll give you the might to do it. He'll give you the strength to do it. How you think you're going to handle all the blessings that God wants to give you? You're going to have to have power and strength to handle the blessing. You're asking God to bless you. Lord, if you're just barely making it now, what are you going to do when God gives you double for your trouble? He said he will restore seven times back to you what the enemy's taken from you. He'll restore your health. He'll restore the joy of your salvation. He'll restore what the canker worm, the palmer worm, the caterpillar has eaten. What are you going to do in this restoration year? What are you going to do as God pours out the former and the latter rain? And it just, I mean, just all the... Huh? What are you going to do when your kids come running in and your grandkids come running in and then you work all day and they say, well, at night we want to come over and let you talk the word of God to us and we, we want you to teach us. We want you to train us, mama. We want you to train us, daddy. Oh, you're going to have to get strong in the Lord and the... What you going to do when your coworker, when you tell them God's going to heal that and he does and that coworker says, how did you know this? What do you know? Can I come over to your house? Will you teach me? Will you teach my family about this power of God? You might as well get ready. God's going to do it. Mm. But our minds are so weak, we don't think in those dimensions. But when we get that strength and power of God, we start thinking in those dimensions. Give God a crazy praise. Hallelujah. I can do all things. It is God that girds me with strength and makes my way perfect. You need the strength of God for your life to get better. You need the strength of God for your way to get perfect. Hallelujah. For your way. Some of us know that on our, even on our way home, we can have trouble. On our way to work, we can have trouble. On our way to the bank, we can have trouble. The Lord wants to make you so strong that on your way, it's perfect.
that everything you do, every step you take, glory to God. I give God a crazy praise that already this year, January, has been the best January of my life. I give him praise and glory that my life right now is more perfect than it's ever been. It's from the strength of Almighty God. It's his strength, his power, his ability. It's the glue that keeps you together. It's the glue that keeps those thoughts right. It's the glue that keeps your mind thinking straight. It's the power that keeps you talking right. It's the ability that keeps you walking right. Thank God for his power. He will give you so much strength, your, your, your whole way will get more perfect. I said your whole way will get more perfect. Oh, is somebody going to get excited with me? Hallelujah. Glory to God. It's God that girds me with strength. Listen to this, Psalms 18, 39. You have girded me with strength unto the battle. How many of you know that there's some battles out there? How many will be honest with me and say, I'm in a battle right now. Just come on, be flat out honest. Don't worry about it. He'll give you strength for the battle. Lord, give me the strength for the battle. I'm going to tell those of you that are not in one, ones are coming. Sooner or later, a battle will come. Sooner or later, a battle will come. Well, I've had people say, you know, I must be doing something right. The devil's been trying to fight me. I've heard people say, I must be doing something wrong. The devil's been after me all week long. Doesn't matter if you're doing right or you're doing wrong. The devil's just after you. Battles are going to come. But the Lord will give you strength unto the battle so that you can fight the battle. So that you can win the battle. Everybody just shout, I'm going to win this battle. Come on. You need to talk to the Lord about it even before the battle's done. That's why David said, through my God, I shall do valiantly. He said, by my God, I can run through that troop. By my God, I can leap over that wall. Come on, somebody say amen. You need to know right now, there will be a battle somewhere this year in something in your mind, in your mind, just even if it's in your mind, a battle to worry, a battle to be afraid, a battle to give in, a battle to be just exhausted and tired. But the Lord has given you strength unto the battle, and he's already subdued that enemy under your feet. What it is, the enemy's trying to climb out from under your feet and get in your way. No, you don't belong in front of me. You belong under my feet. Have you with me? Say amen. Strength to do it. Strength to preach that. Strength to say that. Strength to act like that. Strength to do that in the name of Jesus. I remember years ago, my family will remember this. I was standing for a couple. She had cancer all in her body. And the man was so exhausted, he'd come home at night, and the only way she could get relief was to literally stand in the shower and turn the warm water over her body, and that warm water would give her strength. And he was so tired at night, he'd call me on the phone, and I'd go there and put some shorts on and a shirt on, and they'd put her robe on her, and I'd stand in that shower and hold that woman up as that warm water hit her body, and I would plead the power of the blood of Jesus Christ, and I'd stay in there till there wasn't any hot water left. What was the strength that did all that, the power and the might of Almighty God? Amen. Come on, somebody say Amen. I walked into those hospitals and pulled them people out of bed and held their hands up until the power of God came and all of a sudden I could back off and I didn't have to hold their hands up anymore because the strength of God came inside that body. Don't cry about it. Don't give up about it. Don't mourn about it. Don't grieve about it. Ask for the strength of Almighty God to come inside there. He gives power to the faint. He gives it. He's a giving God. He's a giving Father. He will give you the strength to overcome that what has hurt you. Mm. If you've ever been hurt by a person, you can get around them, and just their attitude can hurt you and bring it all back. God can give you the strength that no matter what they do will not harm you no more. Come on. You'll just be laying there in bed at night. You'll just be, how many ever this happened to you? You're just minding your own business, and it replays in your mind what somebody did to you. Anybody like that, just raise a foot. Anybody here? It just replays in your mind. What do you do about it? Don't think on it. Say, no, I've got the strength of God to cast you down. I've got the strength of God to pull you out of my mind and get you out of my body, get you out of my thinking. You're strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Come on. 
Woo! You've girded me with strength to the battle. I'm going to win this battle because the Lord has given me strength for the battle. Amen. Give God a crazy praise. Woo! Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Psalms 27, 1. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Of whom shall I be afraid? When I was in Fort Portal, Uganda, they came to me, the officials, and they said, you can't say this, and you can't say that, and you've got to be careful with this, and they brought the military out there, and they were there with machine guns, and they warned me, they warned me, they warned me, and how many of you know that that just ain't going to do me any good? And they said there are certain things that I couldn't talk about. There are certain things I couldn't do, but when the power of God hits you, baby, you're not going to be afraid of nothing. I said, you're not going to be afraid of anything. If I'm going to tell you about the day God had me walk right up to a man in the church, hallelujah, and walk right up to him and said, man, you're physically abusing your wife. You keep it secret. You beat her in such a way that nobody knows it. Nobody can see it. You do it in her lower body, and you either need to repent tonight or you need to get out in the name of Jesus. He got so mad at me, he wanted to come across that deal, but it was the truth. And guess what? That gave that woman the freedom right there because he wouldn't repent to walk away from him and start her life all over in the name of Jesus. Jesus. He threatened to sue me. He threatened to kill me. But the Lord is the strength of your life and you don't have to be afraid of nothing or nobody when you're obeying the voice of the living God. A witch came into our services years ago, stood up and said, I have been sent here to defy you and I'm gonna levitate up in the air in front of everybody. I said, no, you're not. You're gonna sit down and shut up in the name of Jesus. Guess what? They sat down and they shut up. Give God a crazy praise. Come on. You don't have to be afraid of nothing when you got the strength of God in your life. Oh, somebody shout amen. You don't have to be afraid of the terrorism. You don't have to be afraid of destruction. You don't have to be afraid of nothing. Come on. They force me now. Insurance company are forcing every church in America to take up terrorism insurance. We had to pay it for the first time in October for the coming year or they wouldn't insure us. We had to pay terrorism insurance. Guess what? You're going to have to pay it over your houses. It's coming. They're, they're forcing the issue. I looked at the man. He said, you've got to pay this terrorism insurance. I said, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. No plague shall come nigh my door. But, it's, but, it, but they're forcing me to do it or I can't do it. Do you understand? understand what I'm saying hmm. I had to do my house the same way let me love the Lord say amen you see the whole world's afraid that's why we're being so careful about what we say about certain religions because we're so afraid well I'm going to tell you something folks without Jesus' blood you ain't going to go to heaven There's only one thing that can wash away your sin, and it's the blood of the Lamb of God. How many believe in the blood of the Lamb of God? And you don't have to kill nobody to go to his heaven because they killed Jesus so that you can go to heaven. Give God a crazy praise. Huh? Psalms 28, 7, the Lord is the, my strength and my shield. My heart trusts in him. I am helped. Therefore, my heart greatly rejoices, and with my song, I will praise him. You've got to get this strength in you so much and believe in it so much that you can just start rejoicing. I'm strong. I'm strong. I give you praise that I'm strong. I give you praise that I'm stronger than that. I give you praise that I'm better than that. I give you praise that I've got the power of God over that. I give you praise that I have the might of God to take care of that in the name of Jesus. Hmm. Come on. Every time I go to Israel, some people, they try to talk about it. You mean you're going to go to Israel? Aren't you afraid? Oh, my God. People are afraid of us way too much. Afraid they're going to run out of money. Afraid they're going to run out of this. Afraid about that. Afraid about this. Afraid about that. Afraid about this. You need the strength of God and just start rejoicing in his power and in his might. You just need to rejoice in the Lord. You just need to rejoice in God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
I told you that story last night about that 10-year-old girl with the severed spine. When she went into the hospital and they did the surgery on her with spinal bifida, she walked in. She was having spinal cord trouble. She walked in. Something happened. They severed her spine. The doctor, when she came out of the uh, the operating room, said, I'm sorry, baby. You'll never walk again. And the 10-year-old girl said, I walked in. I'm walking out. Guess what? She walked out. I'm walking in, I'm walking out. Isn't that exactly what, isn't that exactly what Caleb said? I've got the power to go out, I've got the power to come back. Try it with me. I've got the power to go out, I've got the, oh my God, oh my God. Strength, ability, power, might. Who's going to shout with me about it? Who's going to believe in it? Power to accomplish it, power to see it through, power to do it in the name of Jesus. I power so much strength that I'm rejoicing in the Lord, so much ability that I'm rejoicing in the Lord in the name. Mm. Psalms 28, 8, the Lord is their strength. He is the saving strength, saving strength of his anointed, saving strength. It took strength to save you. It took power to save you. And that power that saved you from your sin will save you from everything else. Saving strength is already deposited inside you. It saved you. Oh, my God. Saving strength. You still have it in you. You're saving strength. My God. When the doctor told me that I'd never preach again because of those black ulcers in my throat, he said it's borderline cancer. Saving strength rose up inside of my body. I've never had an issue again. Saving strength caused them to all. I was laid out on the floor under the power of God and God completely healed them with saving strength. I have preached 10,000 times since that day. Give God a praise. Saving strength. I've never missed a church service in 40 years out of sickness, saving strength. I've never missed a church service in 40 years with a cold, a flu, or sore throat, nothing in 40 years. Give God praise and glory. Why? Because I believe in saving strength. Come on, somebody help me. I believe in that saving strength. Somebody shout saving strength. Hallelujah. I've never seen this man miss one time saving strength. Come on. Saving strength. Saving strength. Give God a crazy praise. He will heal you. He will bless you. He will strengthen you. He will gird you. He will help you. He will deliver you. You've got to talk about it. You've got to rejoice in it. You've got to believe in it. Hallelujah. It is saving strength. It's going to get me out of this. It's going to save me from myself. It's going to save me from them. It's going to save me from that. It's going to save me from everything. Mm. Hallelujah. Saving strength. Woo. Saving strength. A woman came into our services years ago. She got saved. Her husband got so mad. He said, I'm going to kill that man. He loaded up his shotgun, went to the front door to go out the front door, and it would not unlock. He would try to unlock it, and it would not lock, unlock. He could not get out. He could not get out of the house. He could not come down to the church to shoot me. He laid the gun down. When he laid the gun down, all of a sudden, the lock unlocked. He went back over to get the gun and came back, and the door was locked. He tried it three or four times. That's what happened. He laid the gun down, came to church, walked inside, walked down the aisle, gave his heart to Jesus Christ. Saving strength. Mama, will you stand up all covered up over there? I got to turn the heat up for my mama. My Papo Evans down in Winters, Texas, started a brush arbor in Winters, Texas. My mother was born there in a home in Winters, Texas. 
in a home, not a hospital, in a house in Winters, Texas. My papa started a brush arbor service down there. A young girl came to the services and got saved. Her daddy got so mad that he threatened my papa. He said, if she ever comes back, I'm going to kill you. The girl snuck out and came to the services. The man came looking for my papa at the brush arbor. He brought a six gun. He came to the meeting and raised up the gun and stuck it at my papa. He tried his best to fire, to pull that trigger, and it would not fire. He could not budge that trigger. While he was doing that, they summoned and got some sheriffs there. They arrested the man. They handcuffed the man. And they told the story how the gun would not go off. It's still in the brush arbor, outside in a brush arbor. The sheriff took the gun, raised it up. It shot just absolutely perfect. The man went to his knees, got wondrously saved. My papa baptized him in a creek. True story? True story? The other day I was at Walmart. Fonda and I was checking out of Walmart. I looked at the girl there and I said, how are you doing? I talked to everybody like I know them. I said, how you doing, young lady? She said, I'm doing fine. I said, where do you live? She says, I live in Winters, Texas. I said, my papa raised up a church in Winters, Texas. Him and my grandma named Dot. She said, Dot? I said, yes. You mean Roy and Dot Evans? I said, yes. She said, I go to the church that they raised up. They still got their picture there in the foyer of the church in Winters, Texas. And she said, I know them by their picture. How you know that I did a little shout at the Walmart? <laughs> Saving strength. Saving strength. Saving strength. Say it with me. Saving strength. The strength that saved you and delivered you is the same strength that's in you right now. It will save you from everything. It will deliver you from everything. Come on, somebody. Sorry. I believe in this strength so much. I believe in this power so much. I believe years ago I received power from the Holy Ghost that I have an anointing. I speak in tongues. I operate in the gifts of the Holy Spirit all because that he gave it to me. He gave gifts unto men. I believe in the giving power of this giving God. I believe in his giving strength, his giving love, his giving mercy, his giving grace. Oh, let's taste and see. He's a giving God. Somebody shout amen. I'm almost through. Stay with me just a little bit longer. Hallelujah, God. Psalm 68, 35. Oh, God, you are awesome. That's what it should read. You are awesome out of your holy places. The God of Israel is he that gives strength and power to his people. He gives it. And I looked it up, and this is physically, mentally, and spiritually. Everywhere you need it. Amen. Everywhere. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Throw up the next scripture in Psalms. Psalms 105, verse 4. Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his face. Seek the Lord and his strength. You've got to seek his strength. Lord, I know you have the power and the strength, and I seek it. I need it. I want it. William Cowper was, he was, he was born a paraplegic. William Cowper. Say that name. William Cowper. He had no kind of life at all, and a doctor saw the life that he had and brought him into his doctor's office. And he kept him there at his uh, offices. He kept William Cowper almost like in a cage underneath a table. He fed William Cowper. The doctor believed in the power of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, the power of the Holy Spirit. He would read the word of God to paraplegic William Cowper. The nurses helped bathe him and they fed him by a spoon. He was a vegetable in mind and a paraplegic. William Cowper kept hearing that and one day the doctor was at his office and heard a noise. He looked down and William Pat Cowper had taken the door or the, the cage door that came up like this, grabbed it with his hands and raised it up and crawled out and stood straight up on his feet. The doctor nearly passed completely out. God healed William Cowper. 
you know you really probably don't remember his name until I tell you what he wrote. There is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins. And sinners, when they plunge beneath that flood, lose all their guilty stains. That's William Cowper. He wrote that song. God gave him the strength to get out of that mess. God gave him the strength to get out of where he was living and what he was living in. God gave him the ability to crawl out, stand up, and get that, that mind renewed and those faculties back. Nothing is impossible with God. It's saving strength. If we seek his face, if we seek his strength, it's going to come. And you will live the rest of your life in the strength of God. Talk to me about it. I want to live every day in your power. I want to live every day with your strength. I have crawled into a lot of hospital beds with people that are dying. I've crawled in the bed with them. And guess what? It sure didn't raise up a lot of talk. But I've seen God pull them out of that hospital bed because of his strength and power. Nothing is impossible with God. When are we going to believe again in his strength and his power? And we're going to trust his ability. Trust his might. Trust it. Almost through Psalms 138.3. In the day when I cried, you answered me, and you strengthened me with strength in my soul, in my emotions, in my feelings. My soul is where I think. Huh. Man. When I've had family members walk away, the Lord strengthened me. When I've had people walk out and leave, the Lord strengthened me. When I've seen drug addicts get delivered in this place and then walk away from it, the Lord strengthened me. Anybody want to say amen? amen. They just should have let him strengthen them. Yes. How many you love the Lord? Say amen. amen. The Lord will strengthen you out of Zion. He will strengthen you every day of your life. He will strengthen your thinking because your, your, your thinking is where the enemy starts every time to hurt you, to weaken you, is in your thinking. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Are you listening to me? He'll strengthen you. He'll strengthen you. Mm. Hallelujah. Mm. Mm. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Give the Lord a hand clap praise. It works. I, I, I said it works. I've had people tell me when I walk in the doors of this church and y'all start worshiping, the pain leaves my body completely. It's the strength of the... It's the strength of Almighty God. It's the strength of Almighty God. Amen? It's the strength of Almighty God. You need to talk to him about it. You need to believe in it. You need to trust it in your soul. In your soul. I, throw it up. Glory to God. Are we through? Hallelujah. God's faithful and worthy of the glory. Strengthen you in your soul. I could have given you 50 more. He will strengthen you. In the Bible, there's a man with a withered hand. The Bible says that they were waiting on the Lord to heal, and he told the man with that withered hand, stand up. How many know it's hard to stand up when you don't look like everybody else? When half of you is messed up. And you're in a whole room of people and none of them are messed up where you can see it. They were messed up on the inside but not on the outside. And the Lord said, stretch forth your hand. And the Bible says it became whole as the other. That's the strength of God. The strength of God will make you whole where you have been weak. Quit asking God, what's wrong with me that I'm not healed? And start asking for more of the strength of God. Just ask God for more strength. 
Just ask God, Lord, I need more strength in my life. I need more ability, more of your power in my life in the name of Jesus. Come on. Don't magnify your enemy, magnify the Lord. Don't magnify your problem, magnify the Lord. When you tell somebody, make sure you tell somebody that's strong enough to believe God with you in the name of Jesus. Don't tell somebody weaker than you are. Tell somebody as strong as you are so that if any two of you agree is touching anything, it shall be done in the name of Jesus. Pastors are not to lead you, they're to feed you. Their job is to make you stronger. You don't go to a church that needs you, you go to a church that feeds you. Because if you get fed the word, you will be stronger. You don't go to a church to be a teacher or to be this or to be that. You go to get fed the word of God to be strong enough to do what God called you to do. In the na- Come on, give God a crazy praise. So I'm gonna finish like this. I talked to him about it. Lord, I thank you for strength in my body. I thank you for strength in my, I thank you for your strength in my body. I thank you for strength in my mind. I thank you for strength in, my, in the way I talk, strength in the way I am with my wife, with my children, with strength in the way that I am as a minister to be stronger than I have ever been. Come on. Come on. Getting older doesn't mean you get weaker. Moses said, my natural strength is not abated. And he was over 100 years old. My natural strength is not abated. Whew. Whew. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Let's praise the Lord a little bit. Lord, we, th- we thank you for your strength.